Hey YouTube, Frosty here, overfed and underpaid and uh, ready to give you another video. Now we've got a young guy here working our production line at night and he needs his first set of tools. And he's a youngster, he's in his 20s and we want to see if he can keep a tool set together for a while. So I bought another US General cart, I know, I'm going to get flamed for that, but uh, you know, that's what uh, the boss is willing to pay for. So, it's actually pretty sturdy. I was kind of impressed with it. It's featureless. It's a single drawer. But we picked him up uh, some, you know, decent stuff at the freight. A uh, decent set of pliers. Um, the little 64, 66 piece, uh, you know, three ratchet set with some sockets. A set of wrenches, some allens, uh, some screwdrivers, basic stuff. Um, better than bottom of the line and we made a deal with them you know if you can keep this set together don't lose anything for you know six months to a year um, we'll get you a box and we'll start getting you some nicer tools and you can go out and do some service calls with me and we'll start training them like an apprentice so we'll see what happens but uh, let's show you what we got um, now I'm not real big on Harbor Freight stuff, but uh, for the money, this wasn't bad. Well guys, first thing in the pile was your basic SAE wrench set. And we're gonna have to augment this with some metrics uh, probably in about eight or 10 months. We're gonna be getting some more equipment here that uh, was built in Spain. So we'll need some metrics, which I'm sure we can come up with that. Uh, but this is pretty much what he needs right now. I did some cherry picking over at the freight, and I picked out the best looking set I could find on the shelf. And I had to return it, because when I got to the truck, I realized there was a 14 millimeter in there where the 5 8 was supposed to be. But some of them were polished, some of them were... Uh, I guess bead blast finished. Some were uglier than others. These seem to be the most consistent. I mean, you can tell it's a, it's not a great tool. There's really nothing outstanding about it, but it will do the job. Box ends aren't terrible. Open ends, I mean, this is what you can expect for a you know sub $20 wrench set. But it does go from quarter inch, skips the 11 30 seconds, uh, which is not a big deal, all the way up to inch and an eighth. I don't think he'll need anything bigger than that. Nothing we wouldn't just put a pair of channel locks on. And uh, comes in the decent rack. That's one nice thing about these. Now the rack is cheap. Eventually it will fall apart, but... Um, for what we're doing here, I think it, it's going to be adequate. So, right now we're at, uh, I want to say, 20 or $22 for the wrenches. And we'll move on to the next piece. Hey, there you are. Now, the next thing we got was some pliers. I do not like Pittsburgh pliers. Um... The dikes, they're so-so. The needle nose, they're so-so. They definitely rust, they get sticky. They're not terrible. Now, the ones they call Quinn here, I don't know if these are still coming out of China or if these are coming out of Taiwan. These are not terrible. I've had a couple of sets of these, at least the needle nose and the dikes, because I, I always had a problem finding this kit. And, you know, for for $20, this is not a bad set of pliers if you're, you know, worried about losing them or them just disappearing or them rusting or, you know. This kid doesn't have a lot of experience and we want to see, like I said, if he can keep this set together for a while. Now I'm going to go ahead and unbox these and show you. One issue I had with a set we had lying around the shop was 
you know, the heat treat, they get pretty damn hard around the jaws, and I think sometimes they overdo it. I have had the edge of the jaw on the side cutters there chip off. Um, not a big deal. I mean, we just took it over the grinder and reshaped it, and it, you know, they're still around somewhere, but the one thing that quality control on these, while they're way better than some of the other Chinese junk, they are not what I would call good. Let's pull them out and have a closer look. Well, here you go, guys. Let's start with your long nose pliers or needle nose. Looks like the cutting edge lines up pretty good. The tips a little wide if you can focus in on that, but not bad. Uh, one's bigger than the other. Not by much, but it's noticeable. One thing you will notice with these is they are not deburred. These things are damn sharp and uh, they will cut you. But the grind is not terrible. I mean, you could take that over to a Burr King and clean it up a little bit, make it a little nicer, but you know, what for? It's a, uh, it's a $5 pair of pliers and it is more than adequate for what we're gonna do with it. If it lasts a year, It'll get replaced with uh, something of a little higher quality. Now the side cutters, these are not half bad. They line up well, the grind is good, they're smooth. They're already rusting. Hmm. Thanks Harbor Freight. Now, the tongue and groove pliers, this is uh, something I have issue with, okay? I like American-made channel locks, even the Milwaukee tongue and groove, and of course, you know, Nipex or Cunipex. These guys, the metal looks awfully porous in the tongues and grooves there. The top edge is very sharp. I think they could have paid a little more attention to detail in there when they built these. Not to say that they won't work. I'm sure they'll work to an extent. Usually what happens with, you know, cheesy tongue and grooves is the first time you really bear down on something and ask them to hold on, they slip. I know the Pittsburgh ones are junk. They, uh, they just slip. No. Oops. CP, if you're watching this, I did look around the store for some Schittsburg, but I didn't find any. It was just Pittsburgh and Quinn. So that's what we went with today. The uh, Unicorn Schittsburg tools were not available at my particular location. These, I guess you'd call these a lineman's plier. They're a big, heavy lineman's plier. Now, usually you see a little more gap there in the end, but that's fine. These will do everything he wants them to do. Usually, with our guys, these things end up doubling as a hammer half the time, and that's fine. You know. Some of the edges, I mean, you would do well to hit them with a file. Everything on here is sharp. It will cut you. These aren't exactly pleasant to use, but the truth be told, compared to some of the other ones and a lot of the other cheap china junk I've seen, these are more than adequate. They will work just fine. The next piece to our puzzle here, the Pittsburgh ball end hex key set. Now I think this set is back about seven or eight dollars. It goes from 050 to 3 eighths. And what do you say about these? They're Chinese Allen keys. They're the same Allen keys that come in a lot of cheap tool sets. Um, they're not terrible. 
If you have something that you really need to bear down on, you should be looking at Mac and their RBRTs or at least some other quality hex bit. Um, I like Astro. Obviously, there's probably quite a few that would be better, but then again, you'd be surprised. You know, there's some. There's probably quite a few places have the exact same hex keys in their little sleeve with their name on them. And these will do the job for now, as long as nothing needs to be extremely tight. And chances are, um, they'll get lost before they break or twist. But we'll see. We'll keep our fingers crossed if. If this is still a full set in six months, that's the first thing we'll replace. We'll get them some Allen sockets and uh, maybe some T-handles and a better quality set of hex keys. Now here's one area where I'm not at all disappointed, and that's uh, oh, Schittsburg and Quinn's Cousin Doyle. No. Cousin Doyle, I guess, is a relative newcomer to the uh, Schmidt family in the Harbor Freight lineup. And uh, Doyle, I believe, is uh, a Taiwanese man, probably operating a hob or a press or something over there. But uh, old Doyle's screwdrivers and his pliers, for that matter, they're not bad for the money. I mean, I'm sure for the money there's something something comparable or a little a little more that's probably better but this is one area where the old freight has improved light years these are not bad screwdrivers the grip the grip texture is good uh, the tips are not overly brittle and I mean your, your big ones here have striking caps on them you know so they're basically asking you to whack them. I don't know how hard I'd whack them, but, uh, hey, you know, what are you going to do? I don't know if these are magnetic or not. High strength steel, that could mean anything. Where do they put it? You know, there might be a little chunk in the handle somewhere. Or they might be great. I don't know. But I do know that I have the uh, I call them the Quinn knockoffs. They have a red set of uh, rubber band over molded uh, Doyle screwdrivers that look shockingly like a set of Quinn of uh, Kleins. They're the Klein knockoffs, excuse me. And I carried those around in my veto bag for a while, thinking I would leave one on top of a fridge somewhere when I was doing a repair. And I ended up, you know, not losing any, so I rotated those out with a set of those Michael Pros, which are fantastic. And I think we may step up to that manufacturer when we replace this stuff. But hey, as far as these screwdrivers go, these aren't bad. Uh, they're not snap-ons, they're not Max, hell, they're not even Craftsman, but you know, for the money, these are just fine. I mean, this was under $20. And I think they'll hold up for a while. Uh, you know, it's only got to last six months. Well, let's see if it doesn't. We'll, we'll revisit these tools. Here we go, guys. The pig de resistance. The most important part of what we got in our Harbor Freight tool hall there. The Quinn 66 piece high vis socket set. That is long for high quality junk. Eh, it's probably not that bad. Let's get that wrapper off of there, take a look and see what's inside. Well, guys, this is pretty much identical to your Pittsburgh set. I think they just say Cousin Quinn on the sockets. You got very few deeps, 3 8 to 9 16 and you got some 
SAE quarter to 11 30 seconds in quarter inch drive. No metric beeps. You got five sixteenths. So it looks like half. And you've got back up to sixteen there. And three eighths, and then you go a little bigger over here, you go up to nineteen. And up to thirteen sixteenths. Let's see the ratchets. If we can get them out of here. We need a basic Taiwan ratchet. Same thing you'd get in a cobalt kit. Seventy-two tooth count, at least it's supposed to be. Oh, it looks like this thing has a an off function. Wow, back drag's not that bad. Hmm. And you can put it in the lock. Of course, I don't think I'd be using my paws as a breaker bar, but that's kind of neat. Very, very generic ratchets. Very generic socket set. Let's see, it looks like they're all six points. Uh, yeah, everything's a six point in here except your uh, little stars over there. You do get a three inch extension in each drive size. You get a couple of spark plug sockets. But again, I think for what he's doing, this is going to be just fine. So, we'll close this guy up. A little Quinn carrying case, which ain't bad. And we'll walk over here to the very basic U.S. General cart. Now, this is going to be kind of neat for him because he can roll it right up to what he's working on. Everything that he needs is going to fit in this drawer so he can lock it up, all his pliers, his allens, and most important, his socket set, if it'll fit in the drawer, which it might not, or it might, or it might not, it doesn't look like it. Let's see if we can rearrange this and make this work. If we can get that to fit in the drawer, we're golden. He can just pull stuff out as he needs it, put it in the top, and do what he needs to do. Of course, that thing is going to tip over. I got an idea. Or it might be a little small. Maybe we should have got a different array of sockets, but let's try this. move the wrench set all the way to the back of the drawer. Everything out. We move the wrenches all the way to the back and slide them over just as far as we can go. Put the socket set in there. We are golden. Yes, it might tip over. But, hey, for under 200 bucks, we got tools.